I forgot to mention that I saw my father and mother and did all in my power to touch their hearts, but found them adamant. The exhortation was pronounced by a certain Abbe Blin, doctor of the Sorbonne, and the Bishop of Aleppo gave me the habit. This ceremony is hardly gay in itself, but that day it was as gloomy as can be. Although the nuns were full of attentions in giving me their support, my knees seemed to be giving way a score of times, and I felt myself on the point of collapsing on the altar steps. I heard nothing, saw nothing, and was quite dazed. I went to where I was led. I was questioned, and they answered for me. Yet the cruel ceremony eventually came to an end. The people all went away, and I stayed with the flock to which I had been consigned. My companions surrounded me, embraced me, saying to each other, Just look, sister, isn't she lovely? How this black veil brings out the whiteness of her skin. How well that band suits her. How it rounds off her face and cheeks. How well her habit shows off her figure and arms. I scarcely took in what they were saying, for I was overcome with grief. And yet, I must confess that when I was alone in my cell, I recalled their flattering remarks and could not resist verifying them in my little mirror, and I felt they were not altogether undeserved. There are special honours belonging to this day, and they were exaggerated in my case, but I scarcely noticed though they pretended to think just the opposite and told me so, which clearly was not true. That evening, after prayers, the superior came down to my cell. Really, she said, after looking me up and down, I don't know why you have such an objection to the habit. It suits you perfectly, and you look charming. Sister Suzanne is a very lovely nun, and she will be all the more popular for that. Now, let's see you walk along. You're not holding yourself quite straight. You mustn't stoop like that. She placed my head, hands and feet, body and arms, and it was almost like one of Marcel's dancing lessons on convent graces, for there are some in every walk of life. Then she took a seat and said, All right, but now let us talk seriously. We have gained two years. Your parents may change their minds. You may yourself may want to stay here when they want to take you away. That would be no, no means impossible. No, madame, don't you believe it? You have been with us a long time, but you have no idea yet what our life is like. It may have its sorrows, but it also has its joys. You have a good idea of the sort of thing she was certain to have gone on to say about the world and the cloister, for it is written everywhere and in just the same way. For, thank God, I have had to read the piles of rubbish that monks and nuns have produced about their way of life, which they know inside out and loathe, against the world that they love, tear to pieces, but don't know. I won't go into details about my novitiate. If one observed all of its austerities, one would never survive, yet it is the pleasantest period of monastic life. A novice mistress is always the most indulgent sister who can be found. Her object is to hide from you all the thorns of the vocation. She subjects you to a course of the most carefully calculated seduction. Her function is to darken still more the shades of night which surround you, to lull you into slumber, to throw dust in your eyes, to fascinate you, and ours paid special attention to me. I do not believe there exists a single young and inexperienced soul who is proof against this terrible art. There are pitfalls out in the world, but I don't imagine you reach them down in such a gentle slope. I had only to sneeze twice, and I was excused from my religious observances, work and prayer. I went to bed earlier and rose later. The whole rule was waived for me. Just fancy, sir, there were times when I actually longed for the day when I should make the final sacrifice. Not a single unsavoury story happens in the world outside without you being told about it. And the true stories were revised and false ones were invented. On top of which, endless praises are sung and acts of thanksgiving made to God, who shelters us from those humiliating adventures. Meanwhile, the day I had sometimes wished to hurry on was drawing near, and then I became thoughtful and felt my distaste coming back more strongly than ever. I went either to the mother superior or to our novice mistress and confided in them. 
These women are well compensated for the trouble you give them, for one cannot suppose that they enjoy the hypocritical part they play and the nonsense they are forced to say over and over again. It all gets so repetitious and boring for them, but they face up to it for the sake of the thousand crowns their house makes from it. That is the vital aim for which they spend a lifetime of deceit and prepare for innocent young girls 40 or 50 years of despair and probably an eternity of suffering. For it is a certain fact, sir, that out of every hundred nuns who die before fifthly, there are exactly one hundred damned, and that taking no account of the ones who in the meantime lose their reason, get feeble-minded, or go raving mad. I forgot.